In this video, we take an up close look at Leupold's new Mark V HD 2 to 10. Gavin Gu here from UltimateReloader.com. Our Leupold Mark V HD 7 to 35 has become one of our absolute most frequently used scopes for precision long range applications. Now we've got essentially the same scope, but in a 2 to 10 by 35 configuration. We're going to start by getting this out of the box. All right, here's the box contents. We've got the scope itself, obviously, which looks amazing. We've got a sunshade. Very cool addition to have, loophole sticker, instructions, caps for front and rear. We've got a button that will replace the zoom lever if we decide not to use that, and an Allen key for making adjustments. Awesome. Okay, let's talk some quick features and specs. The full name of this optic right here is Mark 5 HD 2 to 10 by 30 M5 C3 FFP TMR. So the last Two acronyms, FFP, first focal plane, and TMR is the reticle style. MSRP is $1,199, so I'm presuming you're going to find a deal on that somewhere that could be under that. Okay, magnification range, 2 to 10, so that's a 5X optic, 35 millimeter tube, so be aware of that when you go to purchase rings. First focal plane, 0.1 mil clicks, prograde optical system, so one of the customers for the Mark 5 HD optics family is the military and they have some pretty high standards. This fits right in there. And we found it to be an incredibly robust optic. This has been banged up. It's been taken to shooting matches. It's been all over the place and it still works absolutely like it was brand new. It's got the side focus with very accurate distances I've found. You put it on 100, it's in focus at 100 and the parallax is set appropriately. It's got the zero lock and zero stop. One of the things that I do really like about this optic is how easy it is to just set the zero and your zero stop is essentially set automatically rather than having to kind of adjust those independently. And it's got a weight of 24 ounces. Okay, now that we've covered some features and specs, I'm going to get this scope ready to mount on the Ultimate Reloader Optics test rig. We'll do some scientific measurements, share those results, and then we're going to figure out what rifle to put this optic on. So here it is. I decided not to put this scope on an AR. I thought this would be the perfect scope for Shorty. You're gonna to wanna to check out our full build on this rifle. This rifle is 308 Winchester. You guys picked the barrel length. I gave you guys the option of 16, 18, and 20 inches. You guys choose 16. I cut it to 16.00001 inches. Threaded, of course, for a suppressor. It works great just how you see it here. And the Mark 5 HD 2 to 10 is the perfect topper for this. But before we get to the shooting, and before we even mounted this, we put this on the Ultimate Reloader Optics Test Rig. That's right. We're the only YouTubers out there, we're the only people on the internet out there that are publishing articles and creating video content with a rig like this. This was completely engineered, designed, and built in-house. I did the machining myself. This is a really cool test rig. We can get things precisely leveled. We can get things precisely aligned. We've built targets for 100 yards, we don't shoot them. We use them to evaluate optics. And everything is calibrated. So when we go up one MOA, click, 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 uh, we're gonna see lines on the target that should exactly be collinear with that line, right? So we can test tracking, we can just test things like magnification, parallax, really interesting way to evaluate the optic. And we can move the camera to position it precisely down to a half thousandth of an inch. So it's very, very precise. And that is absolutely necessary when you're doing these kinds of tests. So we can move the camera X, Y, and Z. We can do precise rotation and get everything all dialed in and then go ahead and do these types of tests. What it does not do, due to limitations in light going through an optic and then going through a camera lens and then getting to the sensor, it does not give you a good idea of image clarity and quality. We're working on methods for testing those types of parameters, so it's, it's more for mechanical accuracy testing and for some optical characteristics, but specifically not optical quality. Okay, so there's our official unveiling of the optics test rig. We've used this for a number of videos. We've never shown what it actually looks like. Okay, 
tracking test. So what we did was we got a good baseline and I was using a setup where I could not see everything perfectly. So the baseline is not precise as you see in the middle there. So, so things are essentially relative to that. Okay, so we go up three mils, which takes the reticle down three mils. And you can see that above the baseline there in the center. We go down three mils, which brings the reticle up to the top of the target. And then we go left three mils, which goes to the right and right, which goes to the left, right? Because if you move the reticle one way, it's going to move your point of impact the other way when you adjust the rifle to suit. Okay, so tracking test on this looks really good. Like I mentioned, we're not exactly on the center of the test target in the middle, and it looks like it's tracking very accurately uh, relative to that initial position. So thumbs up on tracking, and repeatability was great as well. So then I went through a set of magnification tests and captured video of the process of going through the different marked zoom settings, which are two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and 10. And I picked a few different frames from the video here to compare. So down at 2x magnification, I drew a rectangle that was exactly the height of the target board, the entire board itself. So if we go up to six times magnification, it should be three times as large as that 2x magnification. And you can see here, it is, it is so. And at 10x magnification, it's 5x. So we have five of the same exact rectangles stacked on top of each other. And as you can see, the target board height is exact. So uh, magnification settings are spot on. Then it was time to look at parallax. And what I'm doing for these tests is I'm taking the camera and I'm moving it 50 thousandths of an inch to one side, back to the middle, and then 50 thousandths of an inch to the other side, all with the range set to 100 yards, which is exactly where that test target is. If the scope optics are working correctly and if the marking is correct, then you don't see a shift side to side. And as you can see here, we had absolutely zero shift. So this is yet again, a very, very big thumbs up for the Mark V HD 2 to 10. And last we have image distortion. This is where we draw a rectangle that is just inside the bounds of the printed target frame. And what we wanna see is nice parallel lines, no pin cushion effect in either direction. And we can see here that things look absolutely perfect. So with optical and mechanical testing, really big thumbs up for the two to 10. Then came the fun. Now, the way you see the scope here is with everything that's included. When I was shooting, I didn't use the sunshade and the dust caps, but it's nice that the scope comes with those. The sunshade can be incredibly helpful. So we headed up to the mid mountain range where we've got a hundred yard range and a 50 yard range. And I chose to zero this at 50 yards because I feel like that gives me an effective range of hundred yards without really having to worry about dialing up or anything. And uh, that worked out really well. So I got the zero set by bore sighting and then uh, moving the reticle over to where the shots were landing. All good there. Then I went out to the steel yard and shot a little bit with the scope at the steel targets there, kind of free form. Lots of fun. Finally, we headed up to the ridgeline range. Now the ridgeline range here at Ultimate Reloader is quite an experience. There's a Jeep road that goes up to the range. We've got the micro cabin up there with a reloading setup. This time we put up a deer vital size target at 100 yards and I took some shots off of a barricade with a bag just to get used to how things were going to work and then did some offhand shooting kind of NRA high power style. Uh, that's how I can be the steadiest and uh, no problem landing shots on that deer vital size target and no problem seeing it. That's really what I was testing with this particular rig was what does a two to 10 look like uh, for that type of engagement and it was, it was great. So then we took the rifle over to the other side of the ridge line and did a little bit of barricade work. Now this was a lot of fun. Shooting off of a barricade, we were shooting at small, you know, rock chuck size targets. And again, the rifle balances nicely. I, I, I like this configuration with the suppressor and the 16 inch barrel. And the scope definitely feels at home. The scope is definitely 
a step up compared to the lot of the LPVO type scopes that you're going to see uh, because of its bomb proof construction you know from kind of the turrets back it's pretty much the same scope as the Mark 5 HD 7 to 35 by 56 that we have that you've seen in a lot of different stories. I'm actually going to grab that rifle. This guy, right? So two different rifles, two different purposes, and two different scopes. But you can see the similarities here. You know, it's a very familiar user interface. And it's something that I'm totally comfortable with and totally confident with based on the reliability and the performance that I've enjoyed with this rifle. So I am looking forward to trying this two to 10 on an AR. I might have to look at the mounting situation and the eye relief a little bit differently, but I think this would be a great choice for an AR-15 or an AR-10. Certainly a really good choice for a scout type rifle like this, a compact rifle something where your engagement distances are less than something like a, a larger tactical scope would justify. And I know that I can count on the features. I love the revolution counter. The button engages, clicks into position at zero, and then when you go past one revolution, it's going to be flush, as you can see here, and then it retracts on the third rotation. So you can feel where your scope is at, and then if you need to go down a little bit, you have a little bit of down that you can go, and then it pops back to zero. So love the legibility of all of the dials. I love the fact that the magnification ring, the zoom ring, is not excessively stiff. I love the fact that it comes with a short lever. It's just the right length and complements that smooth action on the magnification setting. So if you're looking for something in this magnification range and you want something really robust with super high quality, I would say this is an absolute win. What I'd like to know is what do you think of the Mark V HD 2 to 10? Have you had a look at one? Do you have one? Are you shopping for one? What would you use it for? What kind of rifle would you put it on and what kind of application? Would it be tactical? Would it be hunting? Would it be target? Drop a comment and let's start a discussion. That concludes this video, and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. If you're interested in custom rifles like what we build here on the channel or gunsmithing services, you're gonna to wanna to go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com and get on the wait list. If you wanna learn lucrative gunsmithing like what I show here on the channel, including building custom rifles and Cerakote plus a whole bunch more, you're gonna to wanna to check out the Colorado School of Trades, schooloftrades.edu. Thanks again for watching.